He promised hope and change, a new era of unity and progress. We saw the soaring rhetoric, the electrifying crowds, the historic election of America's first black president. But did Barack Obama truly deliver on his promises? Or was his presidency a study in the limits of power, the gap between idealism and reality, the persistent challenges that confront even the most well-intentioned leaders? Obama became a global icon, a symbol of hope and progress, particularly for marginalized communities who saw in him a reflection of their own dreams and aspirations. But did this symbolic power, this immense wave of hope and expectation, translate into tangible change? Or did it mask the persistence of systemic inequalities, the stubborn realities that often resist even the most determined efforts at reform? The image of Barack Obama, the young, charismatic senator with a message of hope and change, electrified the world. He was more than just a politician. He was a symbol, a representation of a new era, a break from the past, a promise of a more inclusive and equitable future. For many, particularly those who had long felt marginalized and unheard, Obama's election felt like a watershed moment, a sign that America was finally ready to confront its past, to embrace its diversity, to live up to its ideals. He embodied the hopes and dreams of millions, a testament to the possibility of progress, a beacon of hope in a world that often felt dark and cynical. But symbols, however powerful, are not enough. Symbols can inspire, they can galvanize, they can create a sense of unity and purpose, but they cannot on their own dismantle the entrenched systems of power, the deeply rooted inequalities, the historical forces that shape our world. So the question lingers. Did Obama's symbolic power, his status as a global icon, translate into substantive change? Did his presidency truly alter the course of history, or did it merely offer a fleeting moment of hope, a symbolic victory that masked the persistence of the same old problems? Did his policies match the power of his rhetoric? Did his actions live up to the expectations he inspired? Or was the gap between the symbol and the substance, between the promise and the reality, ultimately a source of disillusionment for those who had placed so much hope in his leadership? It's a complex question, one that requires us to look beyond the inspiring speeches, the soaring rhetoric, the captivating images of a nation seemingly united in hope. It requires us to examine the concrete policies, the legislative battles, the compromises made, the challenges faced, the successes achieved, and the shortcomings that remained. Only then can we begin to assess the true impact of Obama's presidency, to discern the balance between the symbolic power he wielded and the tangible changes he was able to achieve. Yes, we can. The slogan that propelled Barack Obama to the presidency was more than just a campaign promise. It was a rallying cry, a declaration of possibility, a testament to the power of collective action to overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges. He campaigned on a message of hope, of audacious goals, ending the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, reforming health care, tackling climate change, bridging the divides that fractured American society. He inspired millions with his vision of a more just, more equitable, more peaceful world, a world where the American dream was within reach for all, regardless of race, religion, or socioeconomic background. But the presidency is not a fairy tale. It's not a realm where hope and idealism reign supreme. It's a world of hard choices, of political maneuvering, of entrenched interests, of limited resources, of unforeseen crises, of compromises that often chip away at even the most noble intentions. And so the question arises, did the reality of power, the messy, often frustrating world of Washington politics, ultimately constrain Obama's ability to deliver on the audacious hopes he had inspired did he underestimate the forces arrayed against him, the resistance to change, the power of the status quo to reassert itself, the entrenched interests that benefit from the very systems he sought to reform? Or did he, faced with the complexities of governing, make pragmatic choices, compromises that were necessary to achieve some progress, even if it meant falling short of the transformative change he had promised? It's a delicate balance a tightrope walk between idealism and pragmatism, between the desire for sweeping change and the realities of incremental progress. And as we assess Obama's presidency, we must ask ourselves, did he strike the right balance? 
Did he achieve enough, given the constraints he faced? Or did the weight of expectations, the allure of hope, ultimately set him up for disappointment? leaving a legacy that felt, to some, more aspirational than actualized. Barack Obama ascended to the presidency on a wave of euphoria, a collective yearning for a more unified America, a nation weary of partisan bickering and yearning for common ground. His soaring rhetoric, his calls for empathy and understanding, his insistence that there is not a liberal America and a conservative America, there is the United States of America, resonated deeply with a nation hungry for healing, for a bridge across the widening chasm of political and social division. But did his presidency deliver on this promise of unity? Or did it, perhaps inadvertently, exacerbate the very divisions it sought to heal? The reality of American politics is messy, complex, and often resistant to the kind of sweeping change that Obama envisioned. The political landscape was already deeply polarized, with partisan gridlock becoming the norm fueled by a media ecosystem increasingly fragmented and driven by outrage and division. Did Obama's policies, his approach to governing, his very presence as America's first black president, trigger a backlash, a hardening of opposition, a deepening of the partisan divide? Did his efforts to reach across the aisle, to find common ground, fall victim to the intransigence of his opponents, the political calculations of those who saw more to gain from obstruction than collaboration? Or did he perhaps underestimate the depth of the divisions, the entrenched beliefs and anxieties that fueled the polarization, the forces that were already pulling America apart long before he took office? It's a question that lingers, a shadow over his legacy. Did he bring America closer together as he had promised? Or did his presidency, despite his best intentions, become a catalyst for further division, a symbol of the widening chasm that continues to define American politics to this day? It's a complex and unsettling question, one that challenges us to look beyond the rhetoric of unity and confront the deeper forces that shape our political landscape, the forces that make unity seem like a distant dream, a fleeting aspiration in a world increasingly defined by division and discord. Barack Obama was often lauded for his pragmatism, his ability to navigate the treacherous waters of Washington politics, his willingness to compromise in order to achieve his goals. He understood the art of the deal, the need to build consensus, to find common ground, to make concessions in order to move forward. He was a master of working within the system, of using the levers of power to achieve incremental progress, even if it meant setting aside more ambitious goals, delaying more radical change, accepting half-measures as victories in a system that often resisted sweeping transformations. But did this pragmatism, this willingness to compromise, come at a cost? Did it erode the ideals that had initially inspired so many, leaving a sense of disillusionment among those who had hoped for bolder action, more transformative change? Did his compromises on health care, on climate change, on financial reform, leave a sense that he had settled for too little, that he had abandoned the audacity of hope for the expediency of political maneuvering? Did his pragmatic approach, his willingness to work within the existing system, ultimately reinforce the status quo, preserving the very power structures he had promised to challenge? It's a delicate balance, the dance between pragmatism and idealism. Every leader faces this dilemma, the need to reconcile their vision with the realities of power the limits of what is achievable in a given moment. And for Obama, who had inspired such high hopes, who had promised such sweeping change, the gap between his ideals and his actions may have felt particularly acute for some. Did he compromise too much? Did he lose sight of the transformative vision that had propelled him to power? Or did he, faced with the complexities of governing, make the best choices he could, achieving incremental progress where revolutionary change was impossible. It's a question that continues to be debated, a testament to the enduring tension between idealism and pragmatism, between the desire for radical change and the often frustrating realities of political power. The election of Barack Obama, America's first black president, was a moment of undeniable historical significance a testament to the progress made in the long and arduous struggle for racial equality. His victory was a symbol of hope, a beacon of possibility, 
a powerful affirmation that America was, at long last, moving closer to fulfilling its promise of a more just and equitable society. But did his presidency truly usher in a new era of racial equality? Did it fundamentally alter the dynamics of race in America, dismantling the systemic structures of racism that have plagued the nation since its founding? Or did it, perhaps, expose the enduring power of racism, the deeply ingrained prejudices, the persistent inequalities that continue to shape the lives of black Americans? Obama's presence in the White House, his eloquence, his dignity, his very existence as a black man holding the highest office in the land, challenged long-held assumptions, broke down barriers, and inspired millions. He embodied the progress that had been made, a testament to the power of perseverance, a symbol of a more inclusive and equitable future. But his presidency also coincided with a resurgence of racial tensions, a backlash against the progress that had been made, a reminder that the struggle for racial equality is far from over. The rise of the Tea Party movement, the birther conspiracy theories, the racially charged rhetoric that permeated political discourse, the killings of unarmed black men and women that sparked protests and fueled the Black Lives Matter movement. These events underscored the persistent reality of racism in America, the deep-seated prejudices that continue to shape perceptions, policies, and life outcomes. So, did Obama's presidency mark a turning point in America's racial history, a decisive step towards a more just and equitable society? Or did it expose the enduring power of racism, the stubborn resistance to change, the long and difficult road that still lies ahead in the pursuit of racial justice? It's a complex and challenging question, one that requires us to look beyond the symbolism of his election and confront the persistent realities of race in America, the ongoing struggle for equality, the work that remains to be done to fulfill the promise of a nation where all citizens are truly equal. Barack Obama came into office promising a more restrained foreign policy, a departure from the interventionist approach of his predecessor. He spoke of diplomacy, of engagement, of a world where military force was a last resort, not a first impulse. But the realities of the world, the complexities of global power dynamics, and the persistent threat of terrorism presented him with difficult choices, choices that tested his commitment to restraint, choices that led him down a path that, to some, seemed to contradict his initial promises. The drone war, a controversial tactic that had been initiated under the previous administration, expanded significantly under Obama's watch. Drones, unmanned aerial vehicles capable of carrying out targeted killings, became a central tool in the fight against terrorism, particularly in countries like Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia. The use of drones offered certain tactical advantages. They could strike at targets with precision, minimizing the risk to American troops, and they could operate in remote areas where conventional military operations were difficult or impossible. But the drone war also raised profound ethical and legal questions. The targeted killings of suspected terrorists, often without due process, raise concerns about extrajudicial executions, the erosion of international law, and the potential for civilian casualties. The secrecy surrounding the drone program, the lack of transparency about targets and casualties, fueled criticism and suspicion, creating a sense that the Obama administration was operating in a shadowy world of unaccountability, where the rules of war were being rewritten in the name of national security. So, was the expansion of the drone war a necessary evil in the fight against terrorism, a tough but necessary choice in a dangerous world? Or was it a dangerous precedent, a slippery slope that eroded American values, undermined international law, and ultimately fueled more violence and instability? It's a question that continues to haunt Obama's legacy, a reminder of the moral complexities of war, the difficult choices that leaders face, and the unintended consequences of actions taken in the name of security and self-defense. The Affordable Care Act, often referred to as Obamacare, stands as one of the most significant legislative achievements of Barack Obama's presidency. It was a landmark piece of legislation, a bold attempt to address the long-standing problem of health care access in America, a nation where millions of citizens lacked health insurance and struggled to afford essential medical care. 
The ACA expanded coverage to millions of Americans, providing subsidies to help make insurance more affordable, prohibiting insurers from denying coverage based on pre-existing conditions, and allowing young adults to stay on their parents' plans until age 26. It was a major step toward a more just and equitable healthcare system, a testament to Obama's commitment to expanding access to essential services for all Americans. But the ACA was also a compromise, a product of the messy realities of American politics, a patchwork of provisions that aimed to appease various interest groups while navigating the constraints of a divided Congress. It didn't go as far as some had hoped, leaving many still uninsured, facing high deductibles, and struggling to navigate a complex system. It was criticized from both the left, who saw it as a watered-down version of true universal health care, and the right, who denounced it as government overreach and a threat to individual liberty. So, was the Affordable Care Act a flawed but necessary step toward a more just health care system, a testament to Obama's pragmatism and his ability to achieve progress within the constraints of a deeply divided political system? Or was it a missed opportunity, a timid compromise that ultimately fell short of its promise, leaving millions behind and failing to address the fundamental flaws of the American health care system? The debate continues. A reflection of the deep divisions that surround healthcare in America, the challenges of balancing idealism with pragmatism, and the enduring question of how to ensure that all citizens have access to quality, affordable care. When Barack Obama took office in 2009, America was in the throes of the Great Recession, the worst economic crisis since the 1930s. The financial system was teetering on the brink of collapse, unemployment was soaring, and the American dream seemed to be slipping out of reach for millions. Obama's administration took swift action, implementing a massive stimulus package, bailing out failing banks and automakers, and enacting policies aimed at stabilizing the financial system and stimulating economic growth. And it worked. The economy began to recover, unemployment rates gradually declined, and the stock market rebounded. Obama was credited with averting a deeper depression, putting the nation on a path toward economic stability and restoring a sense of confidence in the American economy. But did his policies truly benefit the working class, the middle class, the millions of Americans who had been hardest hit by the recession? Or did they primarily serve the interests of corporations, banks, and the wealthy, further exacerbating the growing gap between the rich and the poor? Critics argued that the bank bailouts rewarded those who had caused the crisis, that the stimulus package was too focused on tax cuts for corporations and not enough on direct aid to struggling families, and that Obama's overall economic approach favored Wall Street over Main Street. They pointed to the slow pace of wage growth, the persistent levels of poverty and inequality, and the growing sense of economic insecurity among working-class Americans as evidence that Obama's policies had failed to address the fundamental structural problems that plagued the American economy. So, did Obama's economic policies truly lift all boats as he had promised? Or did they, despite the overall recovery, leave many behind, further entrenching the power of the wealthy and exacerbating the economic divides that continue to plague American society? It's a complex and contentious question one that requires us to look beyond the aggregate economic data and examine the lived experiences of ordinary Americans, the distribution of wealth and opportunity, the enduring challenges of creating an economy that works for everyone, not just the privileged few. Barack Obama entered the presidency with a clear goal, to restore America's global standing, to repair the damage done to its reputation by the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and to reassert its leadership in a rapidly changing world. He spoke of diplomacy, of engagement, of a multilateral approach to global challenges, a stark contrast to the unilateralism and military interventionism of his predecessor. He extended an olive branch to the Muslim world, sought to reset relations with Russia, and pursued a diplomatic opening with Cuba. He signed the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, committing the United States to a global effort to combat climate change. He authorized the raid that killed Osama bin Laden, bringing a sense of closure to a long and painful chapter in American history. 
But his foreign policy was also marked by interventions, by the use of military force, by the expansion of drone strikes, by a willingness to engage in conflicts that seemed to contradict his initial promises of restraint. He intervened in Libya, supporting the rebels who toppled Muammar Gaddafi, but the country descended into chaos and became a haven for terrorists. He drew a red line in Syria, warning Bashar al-Assad against using chemical weapons, but then backed away from military action when Assad crossed that line, leaving a sense of American weakness and indecision. He increased military involvement in Afghanistan, hoping to stabilize the country and defeat the Taliban, but the war dragged on, ultimately ending in a chaotic withdrawal that left the Taliban back in control. So did Obama's foreign policy achieve its goals? Did it restore America's global standing, promote peace and stability, and advance American interests? Or did his interventions, his compromises, his mixed record of successes and failures ultimately contribute to greater instability, humanitarian crises, and a more dangerous world? It's a complex and challenging question, one that requires us to weigh the competing demands of idealism and pragmatism, to assess the unintended consequences of well-intentioned actions, and to grapple with the enduring challenges of navigating a world where American power is both indispensable and often counterproductive. Guantanamo Bay. The very name evokes a dark chapter in American history, a symbol of the excesses of the war on terror, a stain on the nation's commitment to human rights and the rule of law. The detention camp, established in the wake of the 9-11 attacks to hold suspected terrorists, became a legal and moral quagmire, a place where detainees were held indefinitely without trial, subjected to harsh interrogation techniques, and denied basic due process rights. Barack Obama, during his campaign for president, had promised to close Guantanamo, recognizing it as a symbol of American overreach, a violation of fundamental human rights, and a recruiting tool for terrorists. It was a promise that resonated with those who believed in the rule of law, who saw Guantanamo as a betrayal of American values, who hoped that Obama's presidency would mark a return to a more principled approach to fighting terrorism. But closing Guantanamo proved to be far more difficult than Obama had anticipated. He faced stiff opposition from Congress, which blocked his efforts to transfer detainees to the United States for trial or resettlement. He grappled with the logistical and legal complexities of finding countries willing to accept detainees who had been held for years without charge. And he struggled to balance his commitment to closing the camp with the political realities of a nation still fearful of terrorism, a nation where the idea of bringing suspected terrorists to American soil was met with resistance and fear. Despite his best efforts, Obama was unable to fulfill his promise. Guantanamo remained open throughout his presidency, a symbol of his unfulfilled aspirations, a testament to the enduring power of fear and political expediency to trump even the most deeply held principles. Was this a failure of political will, a sign that his commitment to human rights was ultimately subordinate to political calculations? Or was it a stark reminder of the limits of presidential power, the enduring challenges of closing a chapter that had become so deeply entwined with America's post-9-11 identity? The Guantanamo conundrum remains a stain on Obama's legacy, a reminder of the gap between rhetoric and reality, the compromises that often accompany the exercise of power, and the enduring challenges of balancing security with justice, pragmatism with principle change we can believe in. That was the clarion call of Barack Obama's campaign, a message that resonated deeply with a nation weary of partisan gridlock, yearning for fresh ideas, and hungry for a departure from the status quo. He promised a new era in American politics, a break from the past, a government that was more transparent, more accountable, more responsive to the needs of ordinary people. He pledged to end the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, to reform health care, to tackle climate change, to bridge the racial divide, to restore America's standing in the world. But how much did his policies truly break from the status quo? Did he deliver on his promise of transformative change? Or did his presidency, despite the soaring rhetoric, ultimately represent a continuation of the policies and practices of his predecessors? In some areas, the change was undeniable. The Affordable Care Act, 
for all its limitations, was a major step towards expanding healthcare access. The end of the Iraq War, however messy and incomplete, fulfilled a campaign promise and brought a long and costly conflict to a close. The Paris Agreement on Climate Change, though later abandoned by his successor, demonstrated a commitment to global cooperation on one of the most pressing challenges of our time. But in other areas, the continuity was more apparent than the change. The drone war expanded, Guantanamo remained open, financial reform fell short of expectations, and the military-industrial complex continued to thrive. His foreign policy, while emphasizing diplomacy, was still marked by interventions, covert operations, and a reliance on military force. His economic policies, while steering the nation out of recession, did little to address the underlying structural problems of inequality and the erosion of the middle class. So, was Obama a transformative president, a radical break from the past? Or was he, despite the rhetoric of change, ultimately a pragmatist, a leader who worked within the existing system, making incremental progress where revolutionary change proved elusive? The answer, like so much about his legacy, is complex and nuanced, a blend of continuity and change, of ambition and compromise, of idealism and the often frustrating realities of governing a nation as vast and complex as the United States. Barack Obama was a master storyteller, a gifted orator who possessed a rare ability to connect with audiences on a visceral, emotional level. His speeches were more than just policy pronouncements. They were narratives, stories that resonated with people's hopes and fears, their dreams and aspirations. He spoke of hope and change, of unity and progress, of the enduring power of the American dream. He evoked the stories of ordinary Americans, their struggles and triumphs, their resilience in the face of adversity, their belief in a better future. He used his own story, the story of a biracial child raised by a single mother who rose to become the first black president of the United States, as a testament to the promise of America the possibility of overcoming seemingly insurmountable obstacles, the enduring power of hope and perseverance. His words resonated, inspiring millions, creating a sense of connection, a feeling that he understood their struggles, that he shared their dreams, that he was fighting for them. But did the power of his storytelling, his rhetorical skill, mask the limitations of his policies, the compromises he made, the gaps between his aspirations and the realities of governing? Did his eloquence create a sense of hope that wasn't always matched by concrete action, a feeling of progress that wasn't always reflected in the lived experiences of ordinary Americans? Did the power of his words, his ability to inspire and uplift, ultimately overshadow the need for more substantive policy changes, for a more radical transformation of the systems and structures that perpetuate inequality and injustice? It's a question that lingers, a challenge to our own critical thinking, a reminder that the allure of rhetoric, the power of storytelling, can sometimes obscure the more complex realities of power, policy, and the often slow and frustrating pace of change. We must be wary of the seductive power of words, of the tendency to mistake eloquent pronouncements for concrete actions, of the ease with which hope can be kindled without the fuel of substantive change. Obama's legacy as a storyteller is undeniable, but it's up to us to assess the balance between the power of his words and the impact of his actions, to determine whether his rhetoric ultimately served to inspire progress or to mask its limitations. The election of Barack Obama was a moment of unprecedented hope and expectation. He was the young, charismatic senator who promised to heal a divided nation, to restore America's standing in the world, to usher in a new era of progress and possibility. He was the symbol of a nation yearning for change, for a brighter future, for a leader who could transcend the partisan bickering and cynicism that had come to define American politics. But those very expectations, the immense weight of hope that he carried on his shoulders, may have ultimately hindered his ability to govern effectively, creating a gap between aspiration and reality that led to disillusionment among some of his most ardent supporters. The challenges he faced were immense. Two wars, an economic crisis, a deeply divided Congress, a political landscape poisoned by partisan gridlock. 
Even the most skilled and experienced leader would have struggled to navigate these treacherous waters to deliver on the sweeping promises he had made. But the weight of expectations, the sheer magnitude of the hopes he had inspired, amplified every compromise, every setback, every instance where the realities of power forced him to make difficult choices, to deviate from the idealistic path that many had envisioned. The compromises he made on health care, the continuation of the drone war, the failure to close Guantanamo, the slow pace of economic recovery for many working-class Americans, these were all seen as betrayals by some, as evidence that he had abandoned his principles, that he had become part of the very system he had promised to change. The disappointment was palpable, the disillusionment real. The hope that had burned so brightly began to flicker leaving some feeling betrayed, others feeling that he had simply been naive, that he had underestimated the forces arrayed against him, the intransigence of the system, the enduring power of the status quo. So, did the weight of expectations, the shadow of the hope he had inspired, ultimately cripple Obama's presidency, making it impossible for him to live up to the image he had projected, the promises he had made? It's a question that lingers, a reminder that even the most gifted leaders are constrained by the realities of power, the limitations of politics, and the often unrealistic expectations of a public yearning for a savior, for someone who can deliver them from the complexities and disappointments of the human condition. The election of Donald Trump in 2016 sent shockwaves through the world a seismic shift in American politics that many struggled to comprehend. It was a repudiation of the Obama era, a rejection of his vision for America, a backlash against the progress he had made, and a harbinger of the deep divisions and anxieties that had been simmering beneath the surface of American society. But did Obama's presidency and the reactions it provoked inadvertently pave the way for Trump's rise? Did his policies, his rhetoric, his very presence as America's first black president fuel the resentment, the backlash, the anxieties that Trump so effectively exploited? The backlash against Obama was swift and fierce. The Tea Party movement, fueled by anger over the Affordable Care Act and a sense that the government had become too intrusive, emerged as a powerful force in Republican politics. Birtherism, a racist conspiracy theory that questioned Obama's legitimacy as president gained traction among some segments of the population. The rhetoric of division, of us versus them, of white grievance and resentment became increasingly mainstream. Did Obama's election trigger a sense of panic among some white Americans, a fear that their status, their power, their way of life was being threatened? Did his policies, particularly the Affordable Care Act, fuel a sense of economic anxiety, a belief that the government was taking from hardworking Americans to give to undeserving minorities? Did his efforts to address racial inequality, to acknowledge the systemic racism that persists in American society, spark a backlash among those who felt that he was unfairly blaming white people, that he was dividing the country along racial lines? Or was the rise of Trump inevitable, a reflection of deeper social and economic forces, of the anxieties and frustrations of a working class that felt left behind by globalization and technological change, of a yearning for a strongman leader who promised simple solutions to complex problems. It's a complex question, one that historians and political analysts will continue to debate for years to come. But it's undeniable that Obama's presidency and the reactions it provoked played a role in shaping the political landscape that allowed for Trump's ascendance, a landscape marked by division, resentment, and a willingness to embrace a leader who exploited those emotions for his own political gain. Despite the partisan gridlock, the fierce opposition, the weight of expectations, and the inevitable compromises that accompany the exercise of power, did Barack Obama leave behind a legacy of hope, a flicker of inspiration that continues to burn brightly, particularly for those who saw in him a reflection of their own dreams and aspirations? His election as the first black president of the United States was a watershed moment, a testament to the progress that had been made in the long and arduous struggle for racial equality. His very presence in the White House, his eloquence, his dignity, his embodiment of the American dream, 
inspired millions, particularly among young people, people of color, and those who had long felt marginalized and unheard. He spoke of hope and change, of unity and progress, of the possibility of a better future, not just for America, but for the world. He challenged cynicism and apathy, urging people to believe in the power of collective action, to engage in the messy work of democracy, to fight for the ideals that make America great. And while his presidency was marked by both triumphs and setbacks, by compromises and frustrations, by the persistent realities of power that often constrain even the most well-intentioned leaders, he never fully abandoned the hope that had propelled him to office. He continued to speak out against injustice, to champion the cause of equality, to inspire a new generation of activists and leaders, particularly among those who had been historically marginalized and excluded from the halls of power. His legacy, then, is not just about policy achievements or legislative victories. It's also about the intangible impact of his presence, his voice, his story, his embodiment of the possibility of progress, his persistent belief in the power of hope to inspire action, to create change, to build a more just and equitable world. And while the challenges remain immense, while the road ahead is long and uncertain, Obama's legacy of hope continues to flicker, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, the human spirit can find ways to persevere, to resist, to dream of a better future, and to work tirelessly to bring that dream to fruition. Barack Obama's presidency was hailed by many as a turning point in American history, a symbol of progress on issues of race, equality, and social justice. His election as the nation's first black president shattered a long-standing racial barrier, igniting a sense of hope and possibility, particularly among marginalized communities who saw in him a reflection of their own dreams and aspirations. He spoke eloquently about the need to address racial disparities, to confront the legacy of slavery and segregation, to create a more just and equitable society for all Americans. He appointed a diverse cabinet, championed policies aimed at addressing poverty and inequality, and signed legislation like the Fair Sentencing Act, which reduced the disparity in sentencing between crack and powder cocaine offenses. He used his platform to speak out against racial injustice, to comfort the families of victims of racial violence, to challenge the nation to confront its own history and strive for a better future. But did his presidency truly represent a substantive shift in the fight for racial justice? Did it fundamentally alter the systemic structures that perpetuate inequality, or was it a symbolic victory that masked the persistence of deeply ingrained racism, the enduring legacy of discrimination, the ongoing struggle for true equality? Despite the progress made during his presidency, racial disparities persisted in areas like education, healthcare, housing, and criminal justice. The killings of unarmed black men and women by police officers sparked nationwide protests and fueled the Black Lives Matter movement, a stark reminder that the struggle for racial justice was far from over. The rise of Donald Trump, who exploited racial anxieties and appealed to white grievance, further underscored the fragility of the progress that had been made, the deep divisions that continue to fracture American society along racial lines. So, as we reflect on Obama's legacy on race, we must grapple with the tension between the symbolism of his election and the persistent realities of racial injustice. Did his presidency represent a turning point, a decisive shift toward a more just and equitable society? Or was it a moment of hope and inspiration that, while significant, ultimately failed to dismantle the deep-seated structures of racism that continue to shape the American experience. It's a question that challenges us to look beyond the symbolism, to confront the uncomfortable truths about race in America, and to continue the fight for a more just and equitable future for all. Barack Obama's charisma was undeniable. He possessed a rare gift for connecting with audiences, for inspiring hope, for conveying a sense of empathy and understanding that transcended political differences. His speeches were often soaring, eloquent calls for unity, progress, and a belief in the possibility of a better future. His personal story, his journey from humble beginnings to the highest office in the land, resonated with millions, embodying the American dream and offering a vision of a nation where anything was possible. 
His charisma was a powerful asset, enabling him to mobilize support for his campaigns, to connect with voters on a personal level, to rally the nation behind his vision. But did this very charisma, this undeniable personal appeal, ultimately overshadow the need for more substantive policy changes, for a deeper reckoning with the systemic issues that plagued American society? Did the focus on Obama's personality, his eloquence, his ability to inspire, lead to a focus on style over substance, on rhetoric over results? Did it create an illusion of progress, a sense that things were changing simply because the man in the White House was inspiring and articulate? Did his charisma, in a way, become a distraction from the hard work of governing, the messy realities of compromise and negotiation, the often slow and incremental pace of meaningful change? It's a question that's worth considering as we assess Obama's legacy. Did his personal appeal, his ability to inspire hope and connect with audiences on an emotional level, ultimately serve to advance the cause of progress? Or did it, perhaps inadvertently, create a sense of complacency, a belief that change was happening simply because the messenger was so compelling? It's a reminder that charisma, while a powerful tool for leadership, is not a substitute for concrete action for policies that address the root causes of inequality and injustice, for a commitment to systemic change that goes beyond the allure of personality and the seductive power of words. Barack Obama entered the presidency with a wave of optimism and a laundry list of ambitious promises, ending the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, closing Guantanamo Bay, reforming health care, tackling climate change, bridging the racial divide, restoring America's global standing. It was a bold agenda, a vision for a more just, equitable, and peaceful world. But as with any presidency, the realities of power, the complexities of governing, and the unforeseen challenges that inevitably arise often lead to a gap between aspiration and achievement, between promises made and promises kept. So what were Obama's biggest unfulfilled promises, and why did he fall short in certain areas? The failure to close Guantanamo Bay, despite repeated pledges to do so, stands as a stark reminder of the limits of presidential power, the enduring influence of fear and political expediency, and the difficulty of dismantling a system that had become so deeply entrenched in the post-9-11 security apparatus. The Affordable Care Act, while expanding health care access for millions, fell short of the aspirations for universal health care leaving many still uninsured or struggling with high costs, a testament to the power of entrenched interests and the challenges of enacting sweeping reform in a deeply divided political system. The drone war expanded under Obama, despite his initial promises of a more restrained foreign policy, reflecting the enduring allure of military solutions, the pressure to take decisive action against perceived threats, and the moral complexities of waging war in a shadowy world of covert operations. And while he ended the war in Iraq, the conflict in Afghanistan dragged on, ultimately ending in a chaotic withdrawal that left the Taliban back in control, a reminder of the limits of American power to impose its will on a complex and intractable world. These unfulfilled promises offer valuable insights into the challenges of enacting meaningful change, the gap between rhetoric and reality, and the enduring tensions between idealism and pragmatism in the exercise of power. They remind us that even the most well-intentioned leaders face constraints, make compromises, and grapple with unforeseen circumstances that can derail even the most carefully crafted plans. And they challenge us to critically examine the promises made by those who seek power, to hold them accountable for their actions, and to recognize that the pursuit of a more just and equitable world is an ongoing struggle, a marathon, not a sprint, a journey that requires constant vigilance, persistent effort, and a willingness to learn from the successes and failures of those who came before us. Barack Obama's presidency was a watershed moment in American history, a time of both immense hope and bitter disappointment, of significant progress and persistent challenges. His election as the nation's first black president shattered a long-standing racial barrier, inspiring millions and signaling a potential shift in the nation's social and political landscape. But his two terms in office were also marked by partisan gridlock, economic uncertainty, ongoing wars, and a resurgence of racial tensions, 
leaving a complex and contested legacy that continues to be debated and reinterpreted. So, how has Obama's presidency shaped the political landscape, both domestically and internationally? What are the long-term consequences of his decisions, both the triumphs and the shortcomings, the policies enacted, and the promises left unfulfilled? Domestically, his signature achievement, the Affordable Care Act, remains a cornerstone of the health care system, expanding access to millions while also facing ongoing challenges and criticism. His economic policies, while credited with steering the nation out of recession, have been criticized for exacerbating inequality and failing to adequately address the needs of the working class. His efforts to address climate change, while laying the groundwork for future progress, were ultimately hampered by partisan opposition and the limitations of executive power. Internationally, his legacy is equally complex. He ended the war in Iraq, but the conflict in Afghanistan dragged on, ultimately ending in a chaotic withdrawal. He restored America's global standing through diplomacy and engagement, but also expanded the use of drone strikes and intervened in conflicts that contributed to instability and humanitarian crises. His signature foreign policy achievement, the Iran nuclear deal, was later abandoned by his successor, highlighting the fragility of international agreements and the shifting tides of global power dynamics. Obama's presidency, for all its complexities and contradictions, left an undeniable mark on the world. His election inspired millions, his rhetoric challenged cynicism, and his policies, while not always achieving their intended goals, attempted to address some of the most pressing issues of our time. His legacy is a reminder of the enduring power of hope, the challenges of enacting meaningful change, the limits of presidential power, and the ongoing struggle to create a more just, equitable, and peaceful world. I hope this exploration of his presidency has been insightful, prompting you to think critically about his accomplishments, his shortcomings, and the enduring questions that surround his time in office. What are your thoughts on Obama's legacy? Did he live up to the hopes he inspired? What were his greatest successes and his most significant failures? Share your perspectives, your insights, your own interpretations in the comments below. And if you found this episode thought-provoking, please share it with your friends, family, and anyone who might be interested in a deeper exploration of Barack Obama's presidency and its impact on the world we live in today. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the complexities of history, politics, and the human condition. Thanks for watching.